Hi, this is Raju from Smart AI Technologies. Welcome back. Today we will see a concept called uh, detecting the skin cancer using deep learning. Here, first I will show the result. Here I am importing an image that is m4.jpg. Here you can see what is that. This is that image which I am feeding to my model, final model. Then what happens once I feed that, I am displaying that image to show you okay and i am feeding that image now after feeding i am going to get the prediction done on my model this is my model model resnet 50 here i am using a resnet 50 i am using that saved model and i am loading the data okay and i am getting the result here once i get the result so it will give me the result in array format okay class 1 will be 0 class 2 is 99 what this means is in our data set whenever i open class 2 is malignant class class 1 is benign it means the date the image is malignant but i should display it so what i am doing is i am taking the data i am reading it and i am taking the maximum um, maximum value in that list and i am taking its index now i will compare it with this list once i compare it with this list i will get if that that is the second one it will be malignant if it is first one it will be benign type of cancer okay now i am getting malignant that that i am uh, finally printing out as a title it means if it's malignant it will be malignant if it's benign it will say it is benign we will try with benign one one more time we will take one another input and we will try okay uh, so here i pasted b1 b2 let us take b1 b1.jpg which means benign okay under percent it says it belongs to class 1 it means finally it will it will print us like this is belong this belongs to benign and okay it is printing the data this is a first part of this video actually i need to extend it to second part or third part why because i will tell you the second part will be detecting the area of uh, this cell uh, which is actually got affected here i need to round it up or i need to recognize that area to do that what are the steps i need to do that i'll try to explain you in the next part of video because first we need to do classification then we need to do the recognition okay in this case we are going we are concentrating on classification of benign and malignant cancer okay that is skin cancer types so uh, try to follow uh, the whole step here okay the, uh, once if you see this video the next part will be very easy for you to understand okay so let's move with the concept now Yeah. before moving to concept i just uh, want to show you something uh, here we reach actually 300 subscribers thank you for that we have subscribed it and here uh, we are posting so many good videos you can watch them because uh, you can see face emotion detection uh, billing softwares and uh, there are so many good concepts like uh, pneumonia and covid detections malaria disease detections uh, and uh, brain tumor detection uh, and one of the best uh, thing is image augmentation here i i try to explain what is the uh, importance of image augmentation how it helps to increase the accuracy of any deep learning model and also i try to explain uh, properly with some example what is the difference between artificial intelligence data science and machine learning you can watch it once more uh, if you didn't watch it and also i told like what are the best five ways to increase the machine learning accuracy uh there are some good projects also they may help you like uh, detecting the handwritten text from the medical prescription and getting details of the medicine and cricket data analysis this is one of the uh, one of the best analysis project you can see within one month we got uh, 2.7k viewers like so many people are watching it okay so many people are liking this video it, it, it will be very helpful for you uh, for an analysis pr perspective and uh, one of our best project like so many students watching are like uh, handwritten text 
recognition using deep learning part one here we are uh, detecting the unwritten part of any image we are converting it into some other language so there we are doing computer vision plus uh, machine translation so you, you if you watch it you may get uh, some extra information extra knowledge also yeah uh, that was it uh, try to watch the videos try to visit to our uh, channel they may help you okay let us move with the concept now that's fine now our first part of the code is importing the data uh, importing the libraries here i am importing os operating system and globe operating system is used to access the operating system function uh, operating system uh, element of the system that is files folders uh, mic or uh, camera like that and glob is used to get the in-depth information of any files or folders numpy is actually used to work with arrays and matrices cborn and matplotlib are used to plot the graphs pandas is a library which is used to input any data sets external data set may be csv excel sheet or txt okay and also this is used to create new data sets we call uh, we call it as a data frame once we create data frame by creating rows and columns we can convert that into excel sheet or txt or csv you can export that okay the, all those things can be done using pandas then comes scikit-learn using this uh, scikit-learn is the machine learning model based uh, library here from that i am taking a function called train test split which is, is which is used to uh, split the data into train test and validation that you will see in the uh, in the code or in the explanation next how i am using that and uh, in which way i am splitting the data and then comes the image data generator this is one of the most important library uh, try to follow a uh, follow up in the video because you will you will understand what is the uh, what is the key importance of this image data generator why i am using it what is the need for using it okay and model model is a keras library which is used to create deep learning model from layers or, or random layers we will bundle up and create a model you will see that okay uh, watch continuously you will see i will explain uh, where uh, i will use model and all then comes layers convolution 2d max pool 2d max pooling 2d flatten dense and dropout these are all uh, deep learning layers or say uh, neural networks are like that we can uh, okay but about them i will tell you uh, below how we can stack them and build a deep learning model in the end now early stopping on callback i will explain all this below okay if i explain it now here yeah, i think it will uh, it will be somewhat hard to understand once we go with the concept you will understand it very clearly okay this this was about the libraries anyway uh, the, these libraries i will i will explain about these libraries in the video okay so don't miss okay watch continuously file uh, first i am defining what is the path of my data set my data set contains train folder and train folder there are two subfolders one is benign and another one is malignant these are two classes of the uh, cancer cells now after that i am going to get what are the types of uh, classes i have i have two types one is benign and malignant and after that using globe as i mentioned above once if i call globe dot globe i can mention the path whichever the path i mention it will fetch the all content of it file path is train under train it will go first then it will go to uh, subfolders under tra train uh, it has benign and malignant it will go to those two folders and after that if i use slash and star dot star it will fetch all the content of all the subfolders like complete path it will get okay here you can see train benign 1298.jpg this is a image path a complete image path in benign like that it will get from both benign and malignant it will give me the complete path as a list i am taking it as a list here you can see here if i am uh, doing it as a list i will get the list of all the paths okay this was my first part next what i am doing is how to get the labels here i have i think uh, you may know or you may not know like 
uh, whenever it comes to any machine learning or deep learning you, we need to have two things one is input and another one is output what is input input in our case is a image what is output output should be what that image is that is label we say okay we should have two things for example there in the file paths train slash benign slash 1298.jpg this is a image what is the label where is that we should have that list also for this input we should have an output list we should create it if we don't then now you will create it but then what i am doing is the above list i am importing first okay then what i am doing is i am splitting each uh, each each uh, element and among each element i am taking the sex second element here uh, you can see that like 0 1 1 nothing but the second element benign or like that okay when i extract only second element you can see benign benign is there in the end malignant will be there okay uh, for malignant image the data path malignant will be there okay uh, maybe you can see here i think okay the list the list is very lengthy so we are not getting there here i am trying to uh, create a data frame as i mentioned i am taking those two list i am making it as in a two columns here file path that related label okay that file path and that related label malignant uh, this is benign okay this is malignant benign malignant benign like that okay for all the images now i have a proper data set data frame here now i want to analyze whether my data set is balanced or unbalanced it's almost we can say like it's bit balanced okay there are 400 uh, more images than, it's fine okay not much difference is there it's fine mm, i'm just plotting the graph for uh, see that okay what my data set then comes how the data set is splitted and uh, what is the way of splitting the data set and uh, how we actually split the data set what is splitting the data set okay i think abo you saw that uh, function i am call i was calling from scikit learn train underscore test underscore split how it works and what are the inputs that we are feeding what will what is the output that we are going to get okay about this i will explain with the diagram uh, that may help you to understand it very easily so we will use some online drawing tools yeah auto draw that's fine here we can go with this <laughs> i will give with an example okay that may make you to understand the concept very easily there is a small baby here okay, this is a baby now you have uh, say you have 100 fruits with you with 100 fruits what you do is 70 will split separately 30 will split separately hmm? now what is the task that you are having is you need to teach this baby about these fruits okay first you will take one fruit say you are taking apple okay you are you are telling that boy uh, apple like that what are the features you will show to him color okay it's safe its taste like that for every fruit you will show these things we call these them as a features input features okay these are all input features but that fruit you will show to him is the actual input okay this is actual input and while you are training you will tell him like okay this is the uh, apple this is a mango like that that we call it as an uh, output okay this is the output now you are training him so whatever the input you are using for training we call that input as a training input okay and whatever the labels you are telling during training we call it as a training output now that's fine only for 70 fruits you will do like that first time you will do you will learn like 30 percent accurately you will learn okay and you feel like oh, you didn't learn very well you will uh, teach with the 70 fruits again and you will train him you may learn 60 percent better and again you will do you may learn 70 percent we call these repetitions as iterations or epochs we say epochs or iterations 
is that fine okay once he learned very well you feel you felt like okay he learned very well now he is uh, able to predict any any fruit whatever you uh, you will show now 30 fruits you kept separately initially now you will take one one fruit from here and you will ask him and you will say you will predict you will say okay for example you took mango okay you told like this is an apple you predicted it wrong okay here whatever the inputs you will show now these 30 inputs they will be called as testing inputs and whatever you will predict now this will uh, this we cut as a predicted result and you already know what that fruit you are showing to him that is testing output testing output is already known to you now you will compare uh, his predicted result with your testing data say you shown 30 fruits to him out of 30 he predicted 20 correct 10 is wrong okay then it is 20 by 30 percent of accuracy like 60 percent accurately he is predicting the fruits that means 60 percent accurately he learned about the information okay here splitting the data is done 70 30 the same thing happens in our case also here you can see here of uh, the whole data i am splitting the data into 75 and 25 25 for uh, testing 75 for training that is okay random state is used to uh, mix up the data here what happens normally above benign will be there below malignant will be there when i uh, split uh, 75 25 25 will go only for malignant it should not happen like that testing data should have uh, should not have only one uh, type of input so i will mix up the columns like this like this it should be actually banana and malignant should be mixed up okay the rows should be mixed up that's why uh, i am using that uh, random state then i am trying to plot some images okay i am trying to uh, plot some images from the data here you can see okay i'm just plotting that okay now i'm calling a function called image data generator which i told you i think i will explain now this image data generator what it will do is whatever the image you will feed it to here it will be converted into a multi-dimensional array of a fixed size okay we call this image data generator an augmentation library some we can do augmentation using image data generator what is mean by augmentation for that i made video uh, this video you can see here okay this image augmentation using a python to increase the accuracy if you watch this video you will understand very better what about augmentation you can watch it okay it will be very helpful for you yeah uh, so once uh, i am calling this function and i am assigning to another uh, library function a variable called train data gen now whatever the data we have it should be converted into arrays for that what i am doing is train data gen function to this function okay uh, sub function is flow from directive sub function is there i am calling that i am pushing my data whatever the data i have or images i have all the things i am pushing it to train data gen now and uh, train uh, underscore data gen once i push that data train underscore gen will be a array of images training images now will be in array format with the size of 100 100 okay batch size is 32 uh batch size nothing but bundling up how many images you are you, i mean images you are bundling up together okay for that for uh, like that i am doing it for training and testing and also even for validation uh once i done that you can see here 1977 are for training 660 are for testing and 664 validation now here i am doing transfer learning transfer learning by using resnet 50 what is this transfer learning and how we use it that is also i explained already uh in this uh, itself image augmentation uh, video itself i try to explain that that's fine here i'll uh, i'll tell you the just a glimpse of it okay uh for example you have a two person one no karate very well one no nothing okay no nothing about martial art now if you are asked to teach kung fu to uh, both of them who will learn better okay a person who know karate it means 
a person who know already something about martial art if you train him the new data he will learn better by using the old uh, information uh, than the other person in the same thing happens in the deep learning model if you build a new fresh deep learning model it will not uh, be that much good but if you take one of the best deep learning model which is already trained on some data for long time and you make some changes according to our requirement and train it like that we are doing resnet 50 is already trained on a image net data set of thousand classes we are taking that we are mentioning our uh, requirement i am saying okay my image is under under class 3 and uh, my uh, class uh, classes are two you can see here uh, here i am defining the dances and my classes are to learn and train using these two i'm i'm defining that uh, model okay here you can see there are some layers i'm using dense layers okay about particularly about these layers i will make in a video okay uh, what they will do mathematically i will try to explain them mathematically what is dense layer what is soft max layer and all those okay I will explain it uh, later in some videos. I will let you know. Okay. For now, you need to understand these are all the layers I need to bundle up. That I will bundle up using a function called model, which I imported above. Now I will call that and I will bundle up all these like ResNet 50 old trained layers plus our new extra added appended layers. Both together I will make a new model. I will name it as a model. And I am going to compile it with loss and uh, metric accuracy loss you can even uh, define it as a binary cross entropy because i have two classes here okay and metrics accuracy and optimizer uh, there are so many optimizers you can play with if you want or you can change the adam to adagod or uh, rms proper like that but adam suits better that's why i am i was i am going with adam now uh, then comes early stopping what is this early stopping and why we need to do it here we will define if a uh, while training if validation accuracy of two epochs is not increasing increasing after two epochs let us stop that training here what this means is for example i am training it for 100 epochs now after 50 epoch 51 52 t epoch accuracy was not increasing validation accuracy was stopped actually okay uh, from there uh, because uh, this 100 epochs it takes a lot of time okay maybe uh, 8 hour or like that it will take but after 50 epoch there is no improvement in validation accuracy then why you go for go for training 8 hours within 4 hours only you can stop that work can be done using early stopping here i removed early stopping you can keep that early stopping okay uh, callback function you can call here i removed because i wanted to train it for 100 epoch and i trained it uh, for 100 epoch you can see uh, so my uh, okay, training accuracy is 100 percent okay validation accuracy was 80 percent uh, this was the result after 100 epochs and after training that i will save that model now i am printing the history we can say history that is accuracy and losses accuracy you can see uh, training accuracy was 100 percent and validation accuracy was 85 percent now how you can improve this validation accuracy that can be uh, done by using augmentation separately okay this you can use this technique you can use this video you watch it once okay you will understand it how we can increase and what difference it makes yeah now 85 percent and 100 percent this is not bad actually this is this is good enough you can see i will show you the results okay and loss is a bit like 0 .0, 0 0.0 during training but during validation a loss is 1.2 it's not that much bad okay when we compare this is not that much bad okay this is also good only now i am doing it for validate validation or we can say cross validation or validation we say like uh, remaining data we will push and we will ask the model it will predict and it will say 85 percent it is predicting on test data or validation data then what i am trying to do is i am giving test as test data as an input as i shown you how we will find out the accuracy we will feed the test data test input it will give us the output here i am doing that model dot predict test gen it means for the model i am giving the 
test input it will give me the predicted output red now i am going to compare that okay now i am going to i am here comparing that y test y test which i already know testing output with the prediction uh, result why uh, when i compare i will get these values precision recall f score and support i will make separate video for this because this comes under uh, confusion matrix okay analyzing the model using confusion matrix so all these having their own equations uh, so but for now you need to understand like precision is almost equal to accuracy almost like uh, equations are almost same so uh, here you can see uh, even accuracy for accuracy also there is equation i already printed accuracy above so i am not printing that here again and again we call this as a classification report above i imported this library classification report i am calling that library and i am feeding the data i am getting the classification report this implies like how our model is working what is the working state of our model uh, this is actually good information about this i will make separate video how to analyze and extract the information using confusion matrix about a model okay if you want you can contact us okay i will give you the equations and all those stuffs then what i will do is i am taking some data from the test i am feeding it to model and i am printing both what was the real and what my model predicted you can see here true was benign predictor was benign true was malignant predictor malignant you can see here there is no error at all here i try to print 10 uh, images for 10 also it is printing 100 percent okay there is not a single error in the prediction okay uh, after that we need to do it on our own images now how we can do that is here we need to load that model first of all okay after loading that model we should import that image what are the image i need to uh, image, uh, image i need to classify beyond that jpg i am feeding it and here i am printing okay uh, once i feed that i will use i will use uh, open cv to read that image and i will feed to my model okay here my model name is loaded model image net actually uh, that i named uh, i named like that okay that's why i'm using that name here you can see while i was loading the name i given is image net actually this is a rest net model okay <laughs> to that model i will give that image x x nothing but the read uh, whatever the image i uh, read from the cv2 that i am uh, feeding to my model it will give the result and i am showing you that image and also the result array okay but from that array what i will do is I will try to take maximum value where is that maximum value 9900 is in first place so i will get the index of it okay then what i what i will get index will say zero it means it belongs to benign so it will give the result that image plus title as a benign this was the first part of this project and my next project as i mentioned is i need to create data set first of all for recognition there what i will do is i will take all these images I will create segmented or uh, mask for all these images that is our second part okay and once I have images and their mask I can build a recognition model which can detect a particular area where uh, this uh, skin cancer is happening so that will be our second part and uh, I will uh, try to publish the second part as soon as possible and don't skip anything and uh, if you don't get anything uh, in the video uh, you can contact us directly i will try to help you with this okay or if you want to ha have any help for further uh, project or further uh, implementation maybe you will be having some other different ideas instead of banana and malignant you will be having uh, six or seven kinds of cancer data set with you if you want us to implement on that you can contact us otherwise you will only get yourself once you watch this video completely yeah this was all about uh, this section we will see in the next videos thank you thank you for your time and patience thank you very much